welcome to Gen Z on Leadership. My name is Gabe Gary, and today I'm lucky to be here with President of Ball State University, Mr. Jeffrey S. Mearns. Mearns has been the President of Ball State for six years. Mearns has his bachelor's degree in English from Yale University. He got his Juris Doctor in Law from the University of Virginia. He was a lawyer for 15 years and a federal prosecutor. Mearns has also taught law and was a provost at Cleveland State University. Thank you for being with us here today. It's good to be with you, Gabe. So I'm um, just going to jump in here. So I know you were a lawyer, and that was a big part of your life. What initially made you want to pursue the educational field, just like leaving law behind? Well, as you said in the introduction, I practiced law for more than 15 years, about nine years of it as a federal prosecutor, and then about six or seven years in private practice in Cleveland. Uh, getting into higher education was actually never part of my uh, plan. I had different aspirations as a lawyer, but was recruited out of private practice to become the dean of the law school at Cleveland State. And the reason I made that decision, I thought I would take that career detour maybe for just a couple of years. I, I, I did it because I loved being a lawyer and I thought helping to educate law students to become good lawyers would be valuable. Also, Cleveland State and the, and the law school at Cleveland State was also very connected to the community. And I think a public university as a community engagement. Um, and I thought it might advance my career, giving me an opportunity to get some leadership skills or um, that, so that it would help advance my career. But as I said, it was not anything I planned to do. It was something uh, that I was encouraged to do. And it's turned out to be a good, good, uh, good opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. Has your experience in law like benefited you in your academic and administrative roles? So I think the answer is yes. Uh, others might uh, might uh, give you also a judgment. Um, I think one of the things that trial lawyers do is they have to serve as good advocates, right? They assemble evidence, they gather evidence. Um, and so part of my job is being an advocate for the university, uh, whether it's in the General Assembly for funding for the university or whether it's with um, uh, potential donors. Also, um, you know, higher education, there are a lot of processes about how programs are developed or administered. And so trial lawyers or lawyers understand process. Uh, and they also, good lawyers, I think, also learn to solve problems, not simply take advantage of them, but solve problems. And that's something that I have the responsibility to do on a regular basis. And then I guess the final thing I'd say is, you know, I meet lots of different people, folks like you, students on our campus, graduates from the university, and lawyers have an opportunity to, and a responsibility to develop relationships with people from different backgrounds. So I think all of those have helped me uh, navigate higher education. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you were president of Northern Kentucky University. Um, what's been like the biggest change, do you think, from being president of, of Northern Kentucky to Ball State? Well, I really enjoyed being the president of Northern Kentucky and then was recruited to come here to Ball State. A couple differences. Um, Northern Kentucky University is in a large metropolitan area. It's right across the river from Cincinnati. And uh, here, Ball State, we're in Muncie, Indiana, which is a smaller city uh, in a kind of a rural uh, area. So that's been a difference in just in terms of the environment. Ball State is a larger university, has much more of a traditional undergraduate student population. Um, Northern Kentucky has more of a non-traditional uh, student population, older population, commuter students. Um, and then the third thing is when it comes to uh, athletics, uh, both Northern, I was at Northern Kentucky when we made the transition to Division I athletics. Here at Ball State, we've been in Division I athletics, and we compete at the highest level of Division I in FBS football. So if you're a sports fan, you know, this year we played football against uh, one week against uh, Kentucky and the next week against uh, the University of Georgia, the two-time def defending national champions. Wow. So I like sports. And if you like sports, we get, as I say, we get to compete at the highest level of Division I college sports. That's a good thing. So um, I've heard that from, from Ball State's website, you've had like the largest freshman class in history. Uh, what have you done differently just to like get the students to be engaged and having fun on campus and that. Yeah, well, so it's interesting that class, that largest freshman class was the was fall of, of 2019. And of course, it was that class that was disrupted by the pandemic in March of 2020. So um, we're now fully recovered from the pandemic. And certainly that was a disruption. 
Uh, but what we do is, you know, again, being a, a traditional residential campus, uh, it's not uh, obviously the experience of what our students have in the classrooms and the laboratories is very important. Uh, but also it's that campus life, it's extracurricular activities, co-curricular activities, Greek life, student government association. So we still firmly believe that providing all those uh, other experiences it is what provides a distinctive educational experience. It's not, as I say, it's not just what students learn in the classroom, it's how they, what they learn also on campus when they're working with their peers in other activities. Right. Uh, so being a professor and working on education just more with students, how does that compare to being more of an administrative position like you are now? Well, so I, when I was a practicing lawyer, I was what was called an adjunct faculty member. So my principal full-time job was actually being a trial lawyer. And then I might teach a class each semester in the evening. So I never was a full-time professor. And so I went from that adjunct role as a practicing lawyer to being an administrator. And so I often joke, like when I bump into somebody and they know I work at Ball State, they say, oh, what do you teach? Uh, and I often respond that uh, well, they, they, the faculty don't let me too close to the, to the classroom. Uh, I try to stay in my lane, but I enjoyed being an adjunct professor. And now from time to time, professors invite me to visit a class to talk about my experience as a lawyer or to talk about my experience here in higher education. Hmm. Uh, so I read about Destination 2040 and the uh, five key points, undergraduate excellence, graduate education, lifetime learning, community engagement, and impact. That's, of course, a big, big plan. Um, how do you think is the best way to go about executing large plans? Just in that position? Yeah, so there's so many organizations that develop strategic plans, and then they don't work those plans. You know, there's an old joke that the plan just goes up in a notebook on the shelf. We're very intent on working them. So there are a variety of ways in which we, so we measure the outcome of the implementation of our plan. We assess on a regular basis the activity. What are the, what are the people all across campus doing to implement that plan? We do it at the, at the leadership level. We do it at the level of the deans. We do it at the level of the divisions. And I, and I on a regular basis, talk about the importance of continuing to work on implementing the plan. So everyone here on campus, all of our faculty and staff know that this is an operational plan and not just a hypothetical plan that sits on the shelf. Yeah, uh, along with that, what is your favorite part, Ben, of the job of president? Well, the best part about being president is uh, meeting all the people, meeting you, Gabe, uh, meeting graduates, meeting our students. I love walking on campus and just bumping into students on the sidewalk. I enjoy visiting uh, classes, as I said. I enjoy uh, having events or speaking at events with our alumni. So really the best part of the job, what I get the greatest gratification is meeting people, a wide variety of people, and hearing from them their own stories about how Ball State had a positive transformative impact on their lives. That's what's uh, both enjoyable as well as very gratifying. Um, what has been the most difficult, the hardest part of the job there? Well, you know, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, anybody who's had been in a leadership position, you know, coincidentally, our university was founded in 1918, which was the last global pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, so our, our university has some history with these things, but that was, uh, that was difficult. Uh, but what was gratifying to me is how our faculty, staff, students, and alumni responded to that challenge. And we were able to overcome those challenges because of, of their commitment, uh, was it, which as I said, is really gratifying. Never want to do it again, um, uh, but it was, um, but that was probably the biggest challenge I faced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Spanish flu was 1918, right? Exactly. So um, just wrap me up here. Do you have any advice, leadership advice for the next generation of leaders? that aspire to be in your position? Or... Yeah, so what I often say, whether it's to students, high school students, college students, or just people on the campus, you know, people often think about leadership as people who have titles, who are in positions of influence that make, you know, maybe consequential decisions. I think the beauty of leadership is that each one of us has the opportunity to support uh, the people around us, whether it's your classmates, whether it's your family, whether it's folks in your community, because um, 
I think good leaders don't define their success about whether it advances their own interests. Good leaders measure their success about how, how many other people they help achieve their aspirations and their goals. So uh, what I would say to, to you know, your classmates who might be listening or others is to don't necessarily seek out positions with titles, look for opportunities to help other th others. That's what leadership really is all about to me. Thank you again for wanting to be on Gen Z on Leadership and Jeffrey S. Mertz. As always, if you want to learn more and apply to be a guest and support the podcast, check us out at sites.google.com slash view slash Gen Z on Leadership. That website will also be linked in this episode's description. Stay tuned for all new episodes as we try to post two to three a month.